Welcome to section 5. Today we'll be learning about properties of logarithms. We are going to be learning three basic properties, the product, quotient, and power properties. And these are going to be used to simplify expressions, so to take two logs and put them into one. And then they're also going to be used to solve logarithmic equations. So before we jump into any examples, let's actually write down what these properties are. So the product property says if I'm adding two logs that have the same base, so what I mean by that is they both have this log base x. So this, this property only works if they're the same base. So if they are the same base and we're adding them, this becomes log base x of a times b. So the arguments become multiplied. Okay, so then the quotient property says that if I'm subtracting two logs, again with the same base, now you could probably guess this one. If adding logs becomes multiplication, subtracting logs is going to become division. So this will be log base x of a divided by b. So same base, I can divide the arguments. Now the power property says if I have a number out in front, so I have a coefficient in front of the log, that becomes a power. So this is really log base x of a to the power p. Now, we're just going to jump into some examples and see how to use these properties. So for examples numbers 1 and 2, we are condensing the expressions into a single log. So if, you're notice, if you look at example number 1, we have two different logs. We have log base 3 of 21, log base 3 of 6, and then we're adding them. So the first thing that's important to check is that we have the same log base. So in this case, we do. So when we condense these two expressions into 1, that's going to become log base 3. Now adding the logs means that I can multiply the arguments. So this is going to be 21 times 6. So our final answer here using the properties is log base 3 of 126. So we use the properties to combine two logs into one. Okay, now if we look at example number 2, this time we are subtracting two logs. First thing I check is that they have the same base. So that's good. Now we have two properties here that we're going to need to use. We're going to need to subtract the logs, but then what you should also notice is that you have this coefficient out in front. We're going to have to deal with the coefficient first, and then we will deal with the subtracting. Now the coefficient, by the power property, becomes a power on the 6. So this is really log base 5 of 6 squared minus log base 5 of 12. So simplifying that 6 squared, this is log base 5 of 36 minus log base 5 of 12. Okay, so now I have logs with the same bases and no coefficients. Same base means that I can condense these two logs into 1. So this is going to be log base 5. Now we have to remember we don't actually subtract the arguments, so you're not going to do 36 minus 12. Instead, we're going to use the quotient property. So subtracting logs is going to turn into dividing the arguments. So this will be 36 divided by 12. So our final answer will be log base 5 of 3. So we took those two logs that looked pretty complicated and just turned them into one. We condensed them using the properties. Now the reason that we would do this is so that we can evaluate the logs. So that's the next example that we're going to look at, this example number 3. In this case, we have two steps. It says condense each expression, so that's what we just did, and then we're going to evaluate it. So we have two steps. We need to, con to condense, and then we need to evaluate. So we have three different logs here. We have subtracting, we have addition, and we also have powers. Powers are what you want to deal with first. So I have this power that's going to be a power on the 144, and I have the 2 that's going to be a power on the 3. So this is going to be log base 6 of 144 to the power 1 half minus log base 6 of 3 plus log base 6 of 3 squared. Now 144 to the 1 half power, so 144 to the 1 half. If we remember from last chapter, we can put this in radical notation. So really it's the square root of 144, so that's going to be 12. So this is log base 6 of 12 minus log base 6 of 3 plus log base 6 of 9. Okay, now I need to do a check. Don't start condensing. Make sure that they're all the same base. 
So yes, I have log base 6, log base 6. When I combine these first two, this is going to be log base 6 of 12 over 3, because I'm subtracting, that becomes dividing the arguments, plus log base 6 of 9. Simplifying the log base 6, so this is going to be log base 6 of 4, plus log base 6 of 9. Okay, so now I can combine these two, so this is log base 6 of 4 times 9, because remember when you're adding logs, that means you can multiply the arguments. Okay, so this is log base 6 of 36. Now, we are not finished. That was just the first step. The first step said condense. Second step says evaluate. So when you evaluate a log, this is when you're going to set the log e equal to x, and we're looking for x. So we want to know what is the value of log base 6 of 36. Okay, so now we're going to switch this to exponential form. If you remember, uh, 6 is the base, 36 is the argument, and x is the e, so sometimes it helps to remember bay. So this becomes 6 to the x equals 36. So 6 to the x equals 6 squared, so we get x equals 2. So at the end of the day, that whole long log that we did at the beginning is all just equal to 2. So as a recap, what we did is we first dealt with all the powers, then we condensed our logs using uh, division and multiplication of the arguments in a one log, and then we evaluated. So I know that that was a long problem, but I would like you to try one on your own. So there's example number four down here. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to condense, and then you're going to evaluate. To start you off, deal with those powers first. Pause the video and come back when you are finished. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. I told you to first take care of those powers. So this is log base 9 of 27 to the 1 3rd plus log base 9 of 3 squared. So 27 to the 1 3rd, that's the cube root of 27, which is going to be 3. So this is log base 9 of 3 plus log base 9 of 9. Because you're adding logs, I hope you checked that you had the same base. So this is log base 9 of 27, because okay, 3 times 9 is 27. Okay, that was the condensing part. Then you had to evaluate. So from here, you want to set that equal to x. So you get log base 9 of 27 equals x. Putting this into exponential form, you should have gotten 9 to the x equals 27. And then you should end up with x equals 3 halves. Now, when you show us your notes tomorrow, you need to have the work to get that 3 halves. Rewrite the 9 and rewrite the 27 in terms of the same base. When you come to class, we're going to check that you have all of the work for this question. So that was the first objective. We were condensing and then we were evaluating using properties. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to use those properties to solve logarithmic equations. So please flip the page. Okay, so example number five, it says use log properties to solve the equations. So what we're going to notice in problem five is we have two logs on the left side, and then we have no log on the right side. Now, we can't switch this to exponential form because we have two logs and not one. So if that log base six of x is gone, we would just switch to exponential form. But we can't do that. Instead, we need to get one log on the left side first. Now, again, just doing a mental check, we're going to look. Yes, we have log base six and log base six. They're the same. Okay, if they're the same base and we're adding, that's going to be multiplying the arguments. So this will be log base 6 of x times x minus 9 equals 2. So we get log base 6 of x squared minus 9x equals 2. All I did was distribute that x. Okay, now this looks more familiar. I have a log on the left side and I just have a number on the right side. So this is log form. So we have our base, our argument, and our exponent. So we can now switch this to exponential form. So this becomes 2, sorry, not 2. This becomes 6 squared equals x squared minus 9x. 
So we get 36 equals x squared minus 9x. Okay, this is a quadratic. I have an x squared and I have an x. So I need to get everything to the same side. So I'm going to subtract 36. So I get 0 equals x squared minus 9x minus 36. Now, we spent a whole chapter solving these equations, so hopefully you remember how to do that. When you're solving a quadratic, you have a few options, but your two main options are to factor or to use the quadratic formula. So I like to factor, so we're going to try that first, and if it doesn't work, we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. We are looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 36 but add to negative 9. It's going to be negative 12 and positive 3. So we get 0 equals x minus 12, x plus 3. Setting both of those equal to 0, we get x equals 12 and x equals negative 3. Now, you are not done. You need to make sure that both of those answers work. What I mean by that is you can never have an argument be 0 or be negative. We only take the log of positive numbers, numbers greater than 0. So log base 6 of 12 is going to work, but log base 6 of negative 3 doesn't work. So what I'm doing is I'm referring to this, this first log right here. If I put in 12, the argument's positive. If I put in negative 3, the argument's negative. So that negative 3 is not going to work. So x equals 12 is our only solution. And it also makes this second log have a positive argument as well. So you need to be careful. A lot of times when you have a quadratic, when you factor or use the quadratic formula, you're going to end up with an answer that doesn't work. It's not always the case, but it is the case often. Okay, now looking at example number six. This one's a little bit different because we do have logs on both sides. Now, there's not a whole lot that we can do with the log on the left yet, so we're going to be concerned with the log on the right. So the log on the right, there's two of them. They have the same base, so let's condense them. If I'm adding the logs, I can multiply their arguments. So this becomes log base 7 of 81. That's 27 times 381. On the left side, I have this 2 that's going to become a power on the x. So this is really log base 7 of x squared. Okay, now this problem looks different than the previous one. In example number 5, once we had condensed, we switched forms. We switched to exponential form. Here, we don't need to do that because we have logs on both sides. Because they're logs with the same base, you can cancel the logs and set the arguments equal. So we get x squared equals 81. Take the square root, so we get x equals 9. Now, hopefully you remember, anytime that you take a square root, you get a positive and a negative answer. Now again, like the last problem, you've got to check that both of them work. The only place that x occurs is on the left side of the equation. If we put in positive 9, that's log base 7 of 9, which is fine. If we put in negative 9, that's log base 7 of negative 9, which is not okay. Argument can't be negative. So we end up with just the positive of x equals 9. Okay, so again, the steps with these are condense into one log, and then either the logs are going to cancel or you're going to have to switch forms. You're going to notice the stop sign next to example number 7, which means it's your turn to try one. This is very similar to example number 5. So try this example, pause the video, and come back when you have an answer, please. Okay, let's see how you did. You should have gotten x equals 2. You should have gotten two answers, but one of them doesn't work. You need to have that problem completed for tomorrow with work. If you come in with just an answer and no work, you will not get credit. If you're looking for an extra math challenge tonight, try this question right here. You should be able to do it using some knowledge of advanced algebra and geometry last year. If you have any questions, please make sure you star, circle, um, bold them, or write down your questions so that you can ask us tomorrow. Bye.